right guys, this is Eric from Nazmas Rotaries. I'm out here uh, having a little nature walk with the family. Um, so I was uh, out here walking. Uh, I just had a thought about it. Just having something new in this channel. I know I just started making videos, but uh, I was just thinking of having uh, at least once or once every other week or maybe once a month, I don't know yet. But uh, I was just thinking of having a rotary, old school rotary clock. Anything 70s has to do with engines, 10As, 12As, 13Bs, transmission as well, RX4s, Cosmos, SA, uh, RX7s. So not only do I want to go ahead and talk about it, see what uh, you could just uh, mix match, but show you guys as well too. Um, I'm a second gen uh, rotary enthusiast. My dad's first gen, he's been doing this since the late 70s. Um, I was pretty much born into it. So uh, between me and him, we have a lot of uh, rotary parts, housings, rotors, like I said, and I wanna go ahead and just, you know, take the time and talk about it and uh, just show you guys what um, what it's all about when it comes to uh, these old schools. Uh, well, what, you know, parts are interchangeable, transmissions, um, you name it uh we're gonna get deep into it and uh i hope you guys just enjoy these videos that are coming soon and the previous uh few videos that I put up already so just uh yeah just give me some feedback guys subscribe hope you like guys are liking the, the content that's that's been coming out in these uh, few videos and more videos to come guys so uh just hope you guys enjoy the view right here in the background and we're gonna get to it all right This is the first video of Old School Rotary Talk. And I want to start it off with uh, these rotor housings. Here we have a 10A, a 69, a 71. This came on the R100. Then we have the 12A that came out in 71, a 74 on the RX2. We have another 12A that's from an SARX7, 79, 78, 79. And we have an RX4 rotor housing that came out on the RX4 and the Repu rotor pickup truck. 74, 75, I think maybe even up to 76. So as you guys can see the casting, it's a little different as the years progressed. This one has very smooth casting. This one will polish up really nice. And as we get to 72, 73, 74, it's a little rough. Then the SA gets a little rougher. And then this one's just as rough as uh, this 12A right here. So they're all similar in height, obviously. Similar in height. Letter suit change. Third year rotary engines have them right here on top. The later ones, they just decided to start running them down here. I guess it'd be a lot easier to view. 
castings are a little rough on the edge as usual. And we're gonna move down to the spark plug holes. I'll go ahead and get my my square right here, straight edge square, and show you guys the difference on the spark plug holes. So as you can see, they're very similar when it comes to the trailing. And they all have the trailing T stamped on there. Well, not stamped, but cast it in there. Some of the later have like this little lip on top. And the early ones, like the 10A, does not. So, there you go. Now if we move down here, on the leading spark plug holes, They do change. So I'm gonna try to line them up on the later 13B, 12A. It's lined up, these two are the same, the SA and the 13B. They're lined up and they're similar. As you get to the 10A and the 12A, the early 10A, 12A, the spark plug hole does change sits higher so obviously there is a distance among each other so the distance on these two are the same and the distance on these two are the same casting down here is very similar except for the 10A. So the R100 10A and the RX2 12A and the 13B big letter uh, RX4 housing have these two block off except for the SA so that's a difference on these and the castings are pretty much the same stamp except for the 10A very similar underneath next we're gonna go check out the exhaust side here we have the exhaust side I'll go ahead and line it up to the 10a so we can see the difference on this side Yeah, 10A definitely sits lower than the rest. Here's the exhaust. Go ahead and line them up. Both seem to sit evenly.
So here we go again to 10A. It's got the grooves for the water seals, compression seal. So does the 12A. It's got the grooves for the water seals. SA12A also has the grooves for the water seals. And 13B also has the grooves for the water seals. So these earlier rotor housings have these uh, holes right here for the bolts. So you can see right next to the dowel pin. But these don't, the later ones. SA, our uh, RX-7 12A doesn't have it. Let's see. It's a difference. <laughs> Either just the big letter. 13B. It doesn't have it. Okay, now moving on, we're gonna go ahead and since we're on that area here, show you guys some dowel pins. This is obviously a 10A. 12A and 13B. They do change in length. Now their diameter, they're all the same. They all go in. Put in a 10A as well. And I'll go. Slide right on in. It's a nice tight fit. So these are all pretty much the same as far as thickness goes. So I have my square edge lined up to the 10A rotor housing. As you can see, it sits lower than the RX2 12A. But higher from the SA RX7 and higher from the big letter RX4 13B. So there's a slight difference on these as far as port timing. Now, if I move it up, now I moved up my square edge to uh, the top part of the exhaust. Now I have it lined up to the 10A. And as you can see, there's not much of a difference between the RX2 12A and 10A, very similar to each other, except for the port size. But as you move along to the SA 12A RX7, it sits higher than these later rotor housings. There you go. Port timing does play a big role on these older ones. So now we're going to measure the width of the rotor housings. We're going to start off with the 10A. Uh, I like to use the mititoyo, it's two to three inches, and this is coolant proof. And it's a digital mititoyo, and it's got the ratchet knob right here, so that way you won't uh, mess up and guess the wrong number. So here we go, 10A. Eric. 
click and it's about 2.36 it's rough rough estimate more or less but that's what the 10a thickness is now we're going to move on to the 12a 12a this one's obviously going to be a lot thicker by the way i did calibrate the micrometer before i started so here we go for the 12a i'm gonna wait for that click and there we go it's about 2.7 Next, we're gonna go to the SA RX7 12A rotor housing. And this one should be the same. So the 12A, it's about, it's about the same, more or less. Again, these aren't cleaned up thoroughly, but That's the size, more or less. Now we're gonna go with the old school 13B. So for the old school 13B, I'm gonna use a different micrometer. This one's too small. So for the old school 13B, I'm gonna use the same with the Toyo, but it's uh, three to four inches. It's digital, and it's got the ratchet. And it's uh, coolant proof too, by the way, if I, if I didn't mention it earlier. So these aren't meant for uh, any kind of shop work around your garage or your shop. So I did calibrate this one before I started shooting the video. So here we go. We're gonna try to get as close as possible. And then once it's here, there, there goes the click. goes that's it 2.93 more or less rough we're not checking for warp pitch or anything like that I just want to show you guys what the difference are between all these 